guys and welcome back to a new video. Today I'm doing my April wrap up and to be honest I am not thrilled to be doing this wrap up because most of the books I read were kind of just okay. You know what this should be an interesting video at the least so let's just get started with the mess that this video is going to be. So the first book that I read in the month of April was Starry Eyes by Jen Bennett. This is her new release that just came out in March and it was in my March book haul and I was super excited for this one because I loved her other book Alex approximately. Unfortunately this one was not on par with that book in my opinion. It just, it didn't live up to, I guess, the expectations that I had built in my head based upon how much I enjoyed Alex approximately. This was kind of just your run-of-the-mill, cutesy, cliche, contemporary. And like, I expected that going into it. I guess I just kind of wanted something a little bit more from it. I wanted to, I guess, feel the same feelings that I had while reading Alex approximately, which I did not get from this book. While it was cute, I just didn't feel as excited and I didn't like ship the couple as much as I did in Alex approximately and I just I guess I just wasn't rooting for them as much I still wanted them to be together obviously but I just I don't know this book just didn't do a whole lot for me all of that aside I still gave this book a four out of five stars because it on its own without comparing it to her other book it was a fairly enjoyable story Although now that I'm thinking about it, I might change this rating to a 3.75. Just because I don't know if I should, if I am like able to, with like all confidence, say that it's a 4 out of 5 stars. I don't know. I'm actually fairly sad to talk about this next one. So the second book that I read was Emergency Contact by Mary H.K. Choi. I this wasn't as good as I hoped it would be. I was hearing a lot of hype surrounding this book and I was just expecting amazing things. The premise sounded really, really amazing. It sounded something right up my alley, something that I'd really be able to relate to. It was fairly relatable. I could relate to the main characters of Penny and Sam, but it just didn't quite live up to the hype. It fell a little fly. It wasn't as exciting or as cute, I guess, as I wanted it to be. It was just okay. It was an enjoyable read. So unfortunately, I didn't love this one. It was still fairly good, but I did end up giving this one a 3.75 out of 5, which is kind of what I think, like I said, I should rate Starry Eyes, but this one was just, it was just okay, which is unfortunate because this is one of the prettiest books I've ever seen in my life. And so the third book that I read in the month of April is really the only one that I really, really loved, and that is Haria History by Melissa Anelli. Yeah, I've been reading this for so long. I think I've been reading this since like last summer and the only reason that it took me so long to get through is because nonfiction just isn't my favorite thing. I don't read it all the time. And if I do read it I need to I tend to need to take breaks in between because I just miss reading fiction or I need to read like a fiction book at the same time as I'm reading the nonfiction. So it kind of just like depends on the book. But for this one, I needed a break and I just took a longer break than I intended to. Also, I just stopped at a part that wasn't very interesting to me. If you guys don't know, this book is all about the Harry Potter phenomenon. It is written by Melissa and Elliot, who is the webmistress of the Leaky Cauldron website. And this is basically just her story her experiences with the Harry Potter phenomenon and growing up with the fandom. Not growing up, but like getting to experience the fandom as like the books were still coming out and as the movies were still coming out and I loved it. Especially for me because I never got to experience the books coming out. I never got to experience the movies coming out because I came to the game a little late. I started reading the books when I was about 12, so this was back in 2012. So like everything was already, or maybe it was 2013. I'm not quite sure, but like everything was already released, all the books, all the movies, and so I didn't get to experience any of the movies in theaters, I didn't get to go to any midnight releases up until Cursed Child. That was exciting. So I just didn't get to experience what everyone else got to experience with the fandom. I get to see how it still is big and strong today, so many years after the books being finished, but I didn't get to experience it firsthand, and so being able to read 
from the point of view of a person who did get to experience that firsthand was very, very exciting for me. And it was just really, really cool to see what was actually going down. Because I did know some of these things from watching documentaries and like just common knowledge, but I didn't know a lot of the things. As you can see, I tabbed the absolute living crap out of it. I also annotated it. Um, I basically just took can you even see that? I basically took stick, uh, sticky notes. I basically just wrote notes inside. I will probably, the next time that I decide to read this or whatever, I might just end up taking those sticky notes out and writing in the margins. These are the smaller ones. There were some that were quite long that I don't know if it will fit very nicely into the margins, but I absolutely adored this book. There were parts of this book that I was more interested in than others. For example, I really was not interested in the whole section about the Harry Potter-like rock bands and the Harry Potter music that was erupting um, at the time around, I think, maybe like the fifth book? I don't remember, but there was um, a whole chapter dedicated to it. Um, it was Rocking at Hogwarts, and it was 36 pages long, and it was just way too long to read about something that I didn't care about, but I didn't feel right skipping over it, because like amongst all that information, there was some interesting tidbits of information, so I didn't want to skip over it completely, as like, I didn't want to miss anything. But yeah, so there were parts that I enjoyed more than others, but it didn't like it didn't affect my overall appreciation or love for this book. And I really appreciate Melissa and Nellie writing a book and talking about her experiences. I also am just like I was getting like FOMO because I missed out on all of this. But also, I was extremely jealous of Melissa and Nellie because she got to meet the actors multiple times. She got to meet J.K. Rowling multiple times. And, like, she even got to interview J.K. Rowling um, for, like, her website and her podcast. And, like, there's a foreword by J.K. Rowling. And there's just a lot of stuff that I am so jealous of that she got to do. And I wish that I had the same opportunities at the time that this was coming out to do so. But I was too young, didn't read the books, and I'm very sad about it. But this book was amazing. I highly recommend it if you guys love the Harry Potter fandom, um, if you're really interested in uh, kind of just the whole phenomenon surrounding Harry Potter. I know that I'm really interested in it, which is why I decided to read this book, because I absolutely, wa I absolutely love watching any documentaries about the books or about J.K. Rowling, so I knew that this would be like right up my alley. So if you guys are kind of similar to me in that aspect and love Harry Potter, then I definitely recommend picking this book up because it is fantastic, and obviously I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. This was my favorite book that I read in April, hands down. It was really, really good, and I highly, highly recommend it. Read it. Read it. It's so good. Okay, so the fourth book that I read in April was Leah on the Offbeat by Becky Albertalli. So, this is kind of like the sequel to Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda. And let me tell you, reading this book was an experience. So I really enjoyed this book. Since writing my review in my book here, um, I've kind of been able to sit on my thoughts a little bit more. And so, like, my feelings have changed a little bit. And I think I'm going to lower my rating. Yeah, I'm definitely going to lower my rating. I don't know to what, but I'll figure that out by the end of my talking. I really enjoyed this book. Not as much as I enjoyed Simon Versus. That one is its own type of thing. It is amazing. This one just didn't quite live up to that, and I found myself not enjoying some of the characters as much as I did in Simon. I didn't, I didn't love Leah. Um, I could relate to her at certain points, and I could understand where she was coming from. But overall, I found her to be fairly annoying and negative, and some comments she made were a little rude, and I didn't even really notice that until Julia over at A Reader's World sent me and Peyton a review that she saw surrounding this book and they mentioned they mentioned this line that Leah said in regards to something that happens. I obviously can't tell you. I don't know how I feel about the romantic relationship presented in this book. I felt kind of forced and I mean that in the regards like I okay, I don't want to spoil anything. This is so hard. But needless I just I didn't ship the characters as much as I wanted to and as much as I had hoped that I would. I was very iffy about them. I still think they're kind of cute, but given all the information that I knew about them going into this book because of Simon, I just didn't quite ship it 
because of those things. I'm not making any sense. I don't want to spoil anything, like, at all. One thing that I am excited to talk about regarding this book is I annotated it for the first time. I never annotate books the first read-through, but I definitely did this one. I figured uh, annotating Simon was so much fun that I'm just gonna go for it and annotate this one for the first time. So I did! All my initial reactions in this book, all of my original predictions, all in here. Um, but all in all, I did really enjoy this book. It just, on its own, it's good. It just didn't, I don't know. I think, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars, but I think I might lower that to a 4, or maybe a 3.85. I don't even know. I'm very conflicted and I'm very upset about it. The last two books I'm talking about I don't physically own. I listen to them as audiobooks. And the fifth book that I read um, is A Sea of Monsters. Like I said, listen to it as an audiobook. It's the second book in the Percy Jackson series by Rick Wright Orton. So if you've been on my channel for a couple of years, you would know that I started reading the Percy Jackson series. I read The Lightning Thief and it was okay. I think I gave it a four out of five stars. I don't really remember. Um, it was enjoyable and so I was gonna read Sea of Monsters. I started it, couldn't get into it because I heard kind of, I heard that it's kind of the worst book um, but I also just wasn't really in the mood to be reading that book and so I put it down and I just never picked it back up. Like this is years later. This is like two years later that I'm picking this, like I thought I picked it back up. Um, but I finally got around to finishing it and I did enjoy it. Um, it wasn't my favorite. It wasn't like this amazing piece of literature. It was just okay. Yeah, I just, I don't really have a whole lot of things to say about this one. I don't have a whole lot of thoughts and that's primarily because for most of the audiobook, for like a good chunk of the audiobook, I zoned out and I wasn't paying attention. I didn't even notice that I wasn't paying attention until I got to a certain point in the audiobook and I'm like, I have no idea what just happened in like the past couple of hours of the audiobook and so I have no idea what happened. I recently watched the movie for the first time so I don't know how like true that is to the book um in regards to the chunk that I missed but I feel a little bit more well-rounded I suppose. I don't really know. But overall I did get to enjoy the characters a bit more than I did in The Lightning Thief. I did enjoy seeing the relationships bloom between Annabeth and Percy and Grover. Um, I liked all the new characters that we got. It was very interesting to see how they played into the story and I really just enjoyed the story overall. For this one I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. Then the sixth and final book that I read was The Titan's Curse by Rick Roy Orden which is the third book in the Percy Jackson series. This one I enjoyed a little bit more. I'm assuming because I actually paid attention to it. I didn't zone out for a huge chunk of it. But again, I don't have a whole lot to say. It still wasn't like really great. Again, still enjoy the characters. I enjoyed all the new characters that we got uh, as well. And it was just, it was an exciting quest that they went on. And I am starting to see why everyone ships Persebeth. I am on board with this ship. They are really, really cute. But yeah, overall it was a pretty enjoyable read. I gave that one a 3.75 out of 5 stars. That is it for my wrap up. I know it was a little underwhelming because it's less books than I've been reading. Only by two. Um, but also just because I didn't love most of the books that I read. They were all kind of just like on the meh. <laughs> kind of level like they were they were okay it was a little unfortunate but what are you gonna do so that's all that I have for you guys today thank you all for watching I hope you enjoyed this video uh, give it a huge thumbs up if you did enjoy it comment down below what you guys read in the month of April I'd really like to know subscribe if you have not yet already and hit the notification bell right beside it so you get notified every time I post a new video and I'll see you guys next time bye